Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rensler with Skyrender Studios, and welcome to video number two for the factorial tutorial. Factorial? Uh, factorial. Hey, brand new word. Sweet. All right. So in our last tutorial uh, called uh, The Very Basics of the Game, we went over how to command your player, how to control him, how to open up menus and close them out, how to do some very basic things like mining, like making a pickaxe, like how to place objects like furnaces and the like, and a burner drill actually. And today we're going to get into uh, mining. So this is going to be the process of mining from using a pickaxe to grab ore out of the ground and how to smelt it, <clears throat> excuse me, and then what to do with the plates when you're done with that. So what we're going to do is uh, load up our previous game. And I didn't actually tell you how to save the game, and that's because by default the game will automatically save. So I wanted to show you how to actually pick up a game that you've auto-saved, but you didn't manually save it. So uh, we're going to get into that. Okay, so we're going to hit play, and instead of new game like we did last time, we're going to hit load game. And here you're going to see a whole bunch of, uh, of saves that I've got. And you've got autosave 1, 2, and 3, right? And go ahead and let's look at autosave 1, and let's look at the, the attributes of it. So it's free play, that's what we did. That's our map version, that's the version of the game. The difficulty is old school, so that's all the original stuff that we did. And you'll see the play time was 18 minutes. And I have this set to autosave every 2 minutes. I believe the default is 5 minutes. So if we go to autosave 2, you'll notice that everything stays the same except the play time changes, right? So uh, these are a rolling 3 autosaves. So every 2 minutes, it will autosave. And as soon as you get 3 autosaves worth of saving, which is 6 minutes, it will start overriding the older ones. So you don't end up with like 100 autosaves. So you can play a long session and not worry about it saving a bunch of files to your computer. So we actually want to use autosave 3, which is playtime of 22 minutes. And that's, that's what we want. So uh, we are going to hit load on that guy. And we're going to end up exactly back where we were at the end of the last game. Nothing has changed because the level was stopped, because Factorio wasn't running. That way, uh, we don't have to worry about enemies coming over, nothing was being produced, nothing was being consumed. So now we're, now we're good to go. Now I'm just back in my character here. So we're going to zoom in here, and we'll see our character. So when we left off, we had just found some iron, which is there to my left. It's right there. And we wanted to get into mining, and getting into smelting, and getting into producing things. Because this is a game about production, it's a game about automation. So, let's get started. So what we're going to do is run over here to our iron deposit, and you don't have to select your iron pickaxe to mine something. If you have an axe, and it's down here in the bottom right, you will automatically use it when you attempt to mine something. And like I said in the last video, if this little box here is yellow, or it looked to me it looks a little bit orangish because I have a color palette problem in my eyes, uh, that that says that I can mine this. So this, uh, this sound effect is going to be loud, and I hate it that it's so loud. I actually turned it down a little bit, and it's still loud. So we're going to get ourselves up to 20 iron ore here. And we could use a burner drill, but I don't believe I have enough fuel to do that, and I will show you a, a pretty cool trick that I use to get a lot of coal. Because in the beginning of the game, you're going to be using coal for about maybe... Realistically, about the first 45 minutes you're going to be using coal, and if you go straight from uh, from the beginning of the game to try to get advanced technologies, you will be not using coal anymore. You'll be using things like solid fuel, and we'll get into those. There will be a tutorial video about that, so don't even worry about that. All right, we're going to push E again, uh, like we said in the last video, and we're going to have uh, 20 iron ore here. We have four iron plates, we have our five copper plates, and we have some coal, and... Uh, the fuel value, I, I meant to say uh, megajoules, not millijoules, in the last video, and I know I put a graphic up there for that. So a megajoule is, I think it's the, a megajoule is, I, it's either, a, I think it's a million joules, it's the amount of energy required to uh, heat up a certain body of water by one degree Celsius or one degree centigrade. So I, I forget what that what that uh, value is. I, I had to look it up. I wanted to look it up to make sure I was accurate, because I care about accuracy. It's a tutorial. I don't want to give you bad information, so I, I, I looked that up for accuracy. Okay, moving on. So we want to produce things. So I just grabbed iron out of the ground, iron ore. 
what do I do with it? First thing I do is I smelt it. So we push E here, and apparently I set down my burner drill, my, uh, my furnace. Apparently I set my furnace down, and I, now, seriously, I don't know where it is. Is that my furnace over there? So, okay. So I, I lost the furnace. The good news is I didn't lose our drill. So I'm going to go to the stone here, and we're going to get ourselves, uh, let's see, let's do 15 stone, because that will give me two furnaces, and I'll show you how how load control works. So furnaces do not load balance. So if you have a bunch of furnaces in a row, the first one that is available to grab something will grab that thing uh, if you have enough inserters, and I will show you those too. And an inserter actually requires a burner inserter, because we don't have electricity yet, uh, does require fuel. So we're going to come over here for fuel, and we have to grab like 20 fuel, because everything I have right now, all of my items... Oh, okay, so do you see how the progress bar in the bottom just changed, and how the animation changed? Do you see how I'm now getting down on one knee and trying to pick at the ground? That means my pickaxe broke. And that's also why I left... I pushed the wrong button there. Why I left four iron plates in there. I need to make another one. So I need a total of four iron plates. So I'm going to make another axe. Now I have another axe. So what's really important for me is to make enough plates so I can keep replacing my axes. And we will do this. But dude, I need fuel. So we're going to get some fuel. So yes, your items have durability. Yes, things like pickaxes can and will break. I don't know. There might be a mod to turn that off, but I don't know. I don't really play with mods right now. I, I'm primarily working on Vanilla Factorio. That's the easiest way for me to you to learn the game and to teach the game. So we're going to grab ourselves some uh, coal. And as far as I can tell, the iron gear, like the iron pickaxe, can mine about 24 of something before it breaks. it might That m number might be higher because they, they've they been patching durability uh, kind of back and forth for the last four or five months. And so that number of things that you can mine, that changes. And in fact, if you look at the durability, you'll notice... Uh, so I mined 15, 16 things and my durability's only been down 1620.9. There we go, 1620.9. So I can mine... Let's see that. What was that? 16, 17 things, possibly. So I can mine about 40 things before it breaks. And you'll see mining power and, then of course, the damage that we talked about last time. So I want to stay near my iron because I want to show you guys how to produce iron. And that's oil up there, and we'll get to that. That's kind of, that's probably a couple videos from now. So let's get started. I'm, I'm done rambling. Let's get started. So we're on the production tab here under crafting, and we have a stone furnace. I'm just going to left-click that guy. We're going to make a stone furnace, and a stone furnace, do you see that number next to stone furnace? What the game is telling you is with the materials that you have right now, that's how many of this object you can create. So a left click, and I'll put a graphic down on for this, the left click is make one of something, the right click is make five of that thing, and if you control left click, it's make as many as I possibly can. Make as many as I have materials for. So if that said like 200, if I control left click, it will attempt to make 200 furnaces. So just letting you know that you don't have to click them one at a time, like rage clicking and everything. But if you want them faster, you do want to left click. So also notice, so I've got the one, I have the stone furnace highlighted and my mouse is over it, correct? Now look down at my hot bar, which is right here, take a look at that guy right there. Look at that stone furnace. If I highlight this, it's telling you that you already have one, or at least one. So it's saying, oh, are you trying to make sure that you have one of these? Do you want to make one? Because there already was one in your inventory, and it's going to let you know that. And I think that's a pretty cool feature, and I love the fact that it blinks. It's trying to get your attention. It says, hey, if you needed one of these, you already have one. Do you really need to make another one? So it's another way of the game making sure that you optimize the resource use. Because as far as I know, unless you have a mod, and this could I could be wrong on this, so I'll have to fact check this, you can't... As far as I know, you cannot take a finished product like a stone furnace and break it back down into its parts, like the stone ore. Now, there might be a mod for that. Uh, I don't know. So, uh, I can look into that, and I can get back to you guys.
and that'll probably be in the next video if I'll have to do some follow-up on things, right? And make sure. Okay, so we have a furnace. So we're going to take, I'm going to push E to get rid of that menu here. And I want to make a bunch of iron. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click my burner drill. And you see that yellow arrow? That is the direction and the exact spot where the output of that drill is going. So if I put that there, okay, so it needs fuel. So I'm going to left click on it. And I'm going to left click on my coal and I'm going to drop three coal. I right click and every time I right click it drops one of something. So I just right clicked three times. I'm going to put that back. And now it says, okay, I mined this iron ore and it's sitting on the ground. Okay, but because you can only have one item on the ground right there in front of the drill, it says, okay, I, I can't do anything more. I have no place to put my output, therefore I'm going to stop. That's very important to know, is that an output of something, once its destination, like a chest or a storage tank or a production line, if something got messed up, if something got broken or you just didn't design it correctly, production will stop until it's being consumed. Something is consuming it. So we are going to use a furnace to consume it. And let's take a look at this. So I'm trying to place a furnace here and it has everything highlighted in what I think is red. It looks a little orange to me. And that's because I'm standing in that spot. It cannot place something because I'm in the way. So I'm going to move to the left and put that back there and you'll notice that it's uh, green now. So we're going to left click on that and now immediately even though the furnace is not smelting anything, because the furnace has an inventory and it can handle one stack of things up to 50, the burner drill is now continuing to operate. And if we click on it, we can see the progress of it burning our coal, our resource right here. And every time this bar fills all the way up and disappears like that, it's creating an iron ore. And you can see that my personal inventory is not going up. I am not picking these things up right now. If I push E and I click on my burner, my uh, I'm sorry, my stone furnace, you'll notice that its inventory is going up, but nothing is happening. And that's primarily because this has no fuel. It can't do anything. So I'm going to left click my coal here. I'm going to highlight the fuel and I'm going to right click five times. One, two, three, four, five. And now it has started to process my iron ore into plate and you can see that it's consuming my coal right here so it has it's consuming one piece of coal and there are four left in the reserves so if I push E to escape that now I have a functioning production line until my burner drill runs out of fuel so these things require a lot of fuel so I'm just going to left click this I'm gonna right click there Let's see, that's wrong. I'm going to set that back. I'm going to right click my stack. I'm going to get six and I'm going to left click and place that down there. There we go. So now that has six. That has three, four something right there. There we go. Now we've got production. So now something that's really important to do is get more fuel. So while that's doing its thing, I'm going to grab some fuel here because we are going to need it. Both of those devices require fuel. So we're going to get ourselves up to 15 coal here, and then we're going to move on. Okay. So I have a trick for fuel, and it kind of goes against logic, but it works. Now, for a burner mining drill, which is what this is, normally you left click it, you put something in its inventory, and it starts running. Well, what if you don't do that? There's a way to take two drills, make them point to each other, and automatically fill each other's fuel inventory to where they will produce forever until they hit 50 coal, and then you run up to those two and you grab the coal out of them. That's what I'm going to do because I need fuel. So right now I've got 36 plate. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to left click. And now I have that 36 plate. And now the stone furnace itself is back down to two here and it's continuing to make more. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press and hold right click. I'm going to pick up the drill and the coal that was in it. And the iron ore that was in it if there was any. And what I'm going to do 
is go back to production here and I'm going to make another burner mining drill. Now understand, if you look at the requirements, it needs three iron gears and it also needs a furnace and that's why I picked up the extra stone. Because it's a burner drill, it requires steam to produce or it requires heat to produce and pressure so it uses a furnace to generate that by burning a fossil fuel. So we're going to right click this and you'll see it makes all my prereqs and boom, there we go. Now I have two drills. Now here's a trick that I use usually in early game to get myself kind of unlimited fuel. And you'll notice that I have a 2 next to my cursor there. So we're going to right click this guy and we're going to put him right there. And we're going to right click this guy and put him right there. Then what I'm going to do is pick up my fuel and I'm going to give it one fuel each. And I'm going to push E and pick up my stack. And that's it. Actually I only need to do one piece of fuel. Now they are mining for they're mining fuel and they're outputting it in their output zone and because that output zone is another device it automatically picks it up it automatically uh, grabs it and because it's a drill they will cross fill each other so I just used two drills and one piece of coal and now they're gonna run until they actually fill up so if you click on this you'll see that it has fuel there's a faster way there is a faster way to grab things from devices like this from chests it's very it's very useful to dump things into chests this way I don't have to open up the inventory of either one of these guys if I'm standing next to them and they're yellow and I hold control and I left click bam bam all I did was control left click and I immediately picked up the contents of their inventory so left click left click I'm holding control boom perfect now I have 46 coal. I'm rolling in coal right now. So now this guy, he actually ran out of ore. He ran out of stuff to do. So if I control click my fuel, I end up with that, so I'm going to right click that and take half that back. Perfect. And now I have I have iron that's being processed here. I'm burning my coal. Perfect. Good. So now I have all the fuel I could want. And I have a stone furnace making iron. Perfect. Well now let's go do the same thing to copper. Right, we have five copper plates. So let's go mine some copper real quick. Alright, and we're going to go get this guy and a little bit of framey there. But we're good. Perfect. And we're going to get ourselves up to 10 copper here. And that is my dog. I apologize. Hold on one second. Okay, so I have copper. I have fuel. And I have iron plates. Alright, so that's how to mine copper and iron and how to start producing. How to get yourself an endless supply of fuel, pretty much, until you have to move them because they end up uh, saturating or pulling up all the resource there and how to use furnaces. So uh, I understand that this has been actually quite a long video. We're at almost 19, uh, just over 19 minutes already. But uh, thank you guys for watching and I know these tutorials are going to be very slow. Our progress in the game is going to be very slow because I want to explain everything. I want you to fully understand what's going on here. So thank you for watching. I am Renser with Skyrim Studios. Peace and chicken grease. Keep your stick on the ice and I will see you next week. And I want to say this to the television audience. I made my mistakes. But in all of my years of public life, I have never profited, never profited from public service. I've earned every cent.